This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and we're going to do a SmackDown that to some of you makes no sense at all, and for others of you, it's just what you asked for. In fact, many of you did ask for this. This is the Microsoft Surface Pro 2 full Windows 8.1 computer. Still a 10.6 inch tablet. Also, this is the new Samsung Galaxy Note Pro 12.2 running Android. Not a desktop OS, not a laptop, but... And they're not quite the same price. We have a thousand dollars for our 128 gig Surface Pro 2 here versus 750 for our 32 gig Samsung tablet here. But 750, a thousand dollars. We're talking expensive either way. So obviously they do compete at least to a certain extent. And we're gonna look at them now. The tale of two tablets that couldn't be more different. But to most people who walk up to them in the store, they probably say, "Well, they look kind of the same. One's bigger than the other. That's about it. Tell me more." Right here we have the new Samsung Galaxy Note Pro 12.2. Just came out. This is running Android 4.4 KitKat with Samsung's Magazine UX and you know their TouchWiz UI is still on here. 12.2 inches. That's why it's called the 12.2. Here we have the incumbent. This is the Microsoft Surface Pro 2, the second generation Surface Pro model. This is running on an Intel Core i5 CPU, 4 gigs of RAM. 128 gig SSD for $999. If you want to go up in spec, you can. Actually, our model is the 8 gig of RAM 256 gig SSD model that costs $1299. Samsung, if you want to go up to 64 gigs of storage, you're looking at $850. Neither of these has LTE 4G. These are Wi-Fi only products. Uh, the Surface Pro will stay that way, but being that is essentially, well, a Windows laptop, you can use USB 3G, 4G dongles if you want anything like that, so less of a problem. Samsung will be coming out with an LTE model in the future. Price-wise, okay, obviously the Surface Pro 2 does cost a bit more, but let's face it, they're both pretty expensive, aren't they? The Samsung is $750. It's got to be the most expensive Android tablet I can think of to date, but you get literally more for your money. 12.2 inches versus the usual 10.1 inch display. Aha. Uh -huh. So here's the thing. For those of you who are watching this and you're, you're snickering because you say, ha, huh, Surface Pro 2, it's a full Windows PC. That's all I could ever want and ever need. Well, there you go. For business people, for people who need to get Windows sort of work done, the choice is obvious. It's going to be a Surface Pro 2. This is full Windows 8.1. Pro 64-bit, the Windows desktops there. Anything you can do with an Ultrabook, you can do there. If that appeals to you and that's what you need, then the choice is obvious, is clear, and it, it makes sense. There's a lot of people who live in Outlook, they live in MS Office, they, and a variety of Windows x86 applications. Full Photoshop, for example, something that you can put on this. Any full Windows application that you want is yours. But here's where it gets interesting, and for a lot of people, the, the boundaries are blurring. Since tablets came out, 10-inch tablets, mostly the iPad, previous Samsung tablets, Asus Transformers, what have you, a lot of folks have realized that the things that they need to get done, they can get done on Android or an iOS tablet. In this case, obviously, we're talking about Android tablets. If you need a web browser, if you need email, if you need Gmail, if you need to play Netflix, if you need to stream YouTube video, if you need to work in WordPress, there's all sorts of things you can actually do with one of these. So that's why this comparison exists. For those of you who say, hey, I realize I don't need all those Windows EXE kind of programs there, so which is better for me? Hmm. In the favor of our note, it's the big display, 12.2 inches, and the resolution is much higher. It's a sharper display. Now, the Surface Pro 2 has a very nice full HD display, 1920 by 1080 IPS kind of technology, wide viewing angles, pretty good color gamut. There are there are ultrabooks that beat it in terms of color gamut, but it's it's decently good, quite bright. The Samsung 2560 by 1600 versus 1920 by 1080, even though it's somewhat bigger, you can still figure out for yourself a lot more pixel density here. So for for those of you who really value a sharp display, you read a lot of magazines, for example, where there's lots of little tiny words. You don't want to zoom in and out all the time. Even if you're editing photos and you want to see a whole lot of detail, but you don't need the full Adobe Photoshop on the desktop experience, wow, the Samsung is just more of a pleasure to look at. Obviously, there's a difference in size, though, too. The Samsung is bigger. Some people, depending on you know your size, you might say, this is just too much to handle. It's sort of like the pizza box here. It is thin. It's 1.65 pounds. It's under a third of an inch thick. So it's it's not that heavy as tablets go. It's, it's certainly not thick, but it's it's a handful right here. Microsoft at the Surface Pro 2 said, hey, the 10-inch the, the form factor makes sense. It just made it a little bit bigger, mostly so they can make it the key, optional keyboard accessory bigger and more typable. But 
you can see holding it. This is bigger than a 10.1 inch tablet. Yes, it's wider, but it, it's still a little bit less of a pizza box. It is, however, obviously thicker. It is also heavier. This weighs two pounds. It's going to be thicker. This has a fan inside that'll kick on every once in a while. It's not a loud computer, but if you're going to play games or something like that, 3D games, you're going to hear it. It can get warm to hot on the back if you're doing something like HD video processing or playing games. Otherwise, it's not going to get hot. The Samsung, like all Android tablets, is a fanless design. At worst, it'll get warm on the back, and it will always be silent since there is no fan inside. And there's our overlapping footprint, so you can see the difference in size. And a 10.1 inch tablet is about, mm, comes out to here or so, so this being a little bit bigger still. Both of these have Wacom Pen technology. Samsung calls it S Pen. Microsoft just sticks with it's a Wacom enabled pen. 1024 levels of pressure sensitivity. You get a bigger pen, which feels nicer in hand with the Surface Pro 2, and it attaches magnetically to the outside onto the charging port, so you have to take it off when you charge. Samsung, of course, it actually has a pen silo for the so-called S Pen. Slides in here, automatically pops up some pen-related tasks, which is kind of nice. Smaller pen, nice that it fits inside, but not as comfortable to hold for a long period of time. So there's a difference. The pens are actually interchangeable on these, but with Samsung tablets so far, if you use one of those bigger pens, like the Surface Pro 2 pen, there's a little bit of tip offset, which is fine if you're note-taking, you probably won't care, but if you're using it for art, it will drive you crazy. So the, this here, pop-up that we have, pen window, action memo, doing things quickly. That's the way that what Samsung has done with Android here for their S Pen and all their Note series products. It highlights the usability. You don't go have to hunt for apps and functionality there. You pull out the pen, there's a bunch of things right away you can do with the pen. It's a little bit more user-friendly than somebody who doesn't know much about computers. They bring home a Surface Pro 2, they stare at the pen blankly and they say, what I do? In terms of ports, I Again, there's overlap in functionality here, but something of a different design philosophy. You're going to get a 3.5 millimeter stereo combo audio jack on both of these, a charging port on the Surface Pro 2, and the charger is also a difference in portability there. Surface Pro 2 comes with your compact laptop style charger. It actually has a USB port on it, so you can charge your smartphone or your tablet, ironically. Isn't that funny? Samsung is the same looking charger as you get with the Samsung smartphone, so very light, very small. Difference in portability, there it is. But back to ports. On the Samsung, it has a micro USB 3.0 port. And again, you can watch our full video review of this to learn everything and read our written review. Right there, USB, micro USB 3.0 port, used for charging and also for USB host capability. So, aha, uh -huh, right away you say to yourself, if you're clever person, and I know you are, you can't charge it and use the USB host feature at the same time. That's right. That's true. Charge it up first. Happily, it has long battery life. And then you can plug in your USB mice, keyboards, game controllers, flash drives, anything Android has drivers for, and, and those are the big categories there. You do have to buy the dongle adapter separately. You can get them for $10, $15, or Samsung has one that has both USB Ethernet and a full USB port on it. So because Samsung wants this to be something of a laptop replacement, you can use some peripherals with this. With our Surface, we have a normal USB 3.0 port. Like most tablets, there's only one. Most Windows tablets only have one because they're not so big. There's not much room, but there it is. Don't need a dongle adapter. This is full Windows on here, Windows 8.1. Anything that works in Windows that there are drivers for in Windows, you can use here. So there's no limitations. If you want to use a, an LTE USB dongle, you can use this. If you want to use a MIDI controller with this that uses USB. All those things are going to be supported here. So if you need that kind of stuff, something more than keyboards, mice, game controllers, and mass storage devices, you're looking more in the Windows world. Surface Pro 2 has a cute little trick, as you probably know by now. Two-position kickstand. It's built in, so you don't have to go find something to stand it up. Our Galaxy just has a normal back. And as you can see, it's Samsung's faux leather back, available in your choice of black or white. It's not bad looking at all. It is plastic. That's what helps keep it thin and light. With Surface, you're getting magnesium. You're getting metal here, vapor magnesium, they call it. It is sturdy. It would hurt somebody if you hit them with it. Don't ever do that. This sounds nice when it closes. It's a nice quality piece of hardware. It's also heavier at two pounds. So it depends on what's more important to you. Do you like that metal? Do you like super, super duper, you know, strength, or does lightness count more? 
In terms of battery life, unsurprisingly, because Android tablets usually last longer than their Windows competitors, Surface Pro 2 is good for about six and a half hours of battery life. That's with mixed use, office, email, playing an hour of video, having some music playing in the background, not doing heavy duty tasks. If you're going to play Civ 5 or you're going to export HD video all day long, you're going to get shorter run times. Our Samsung Galaxy Note Pro 12.2 is good for about 10 hours on a charge, again in the same kind of mixed use. If you're going to be playing Asphalt 8 racing all day or using this as a GPS, well, you'll get shorter run times. But mixed use, 10 hours versus six and a half. Speaking of GPS, no GPS on the Surface Pro 2. This is more of a laptop. It's not a mobile tablet or a smartphone. Yes, there is a GPS with GLONASS in the Samsung. So if you need to use this as a GPS on the go, I'll Admittedly, a very large screen GPS, you can. And that tablet-centric versus PC-centric divide continues with the cameras. Up front, we, we, ha we have HD webcams, like 720p webcam, front and back on the Surface Pro 2. Fine for video conferencing, that's pretty much what they're there for, nothing fancy. The, the Galaxy goes along with the smartphone and the tablet thing more. So 2 megapixel camera on the front, very nice for video chat. And on the back, we have an 8 megapixel camera with an LED flash that takes pretty good pictures in 1080p video. Then. So yes, it's large, people are going to make jokes, but you know, if you're buying this for business, for example, just say you're an insurance agent or something like that, there are business uses for having a high quality camera on the back. It certainly doesn't hurt. If you're going around and taking pictures of somebody's crashed in Fender, well, that's when you might want that. So you would think that the Samsung tablet being, well, you know, Android tablets are more geared towards leisure and having fun and content consumption would be the apex for video watching. Uh, and yeah, it is. If you're watching Netflix or you're streaming from one of the network TV's channels, it is. Unless you need Adobe Flash Player. Then we're back to the world of Windows because, you know, Adobe stopped making Flash Player some time ago, more than a year ago for mobile OS products. You can sideload Adobe Flash Player on the Galaxy Note Pro and use something like Boat Browser if you really want to go about it. But honestly, if you're an Amazon Prime customer, you just want to watch Amazon Prime videos, it's a lot easier on Surface Pro 2. Just natively supports Flash, no performance issues, no having to sideload stuff. So again, that gets back to the full PC experience. Also, when you're web browsing, you know, both of these are going to work just fine, even for desktop websites, mostly. But sometimes you run into sites that just don't format well on Android still, or on iOS for that, that matter, just web, web browsers can be a problem. And you see some inline video that isn't in HTML5 video, mobile friendly format. And then you say, God, I wish I had a PC. Aha, Surface Pro 2. If Windows can play it, which Windows can play everything on, under the sun, let's face it, and you can add more apps to or programs and codecs to support more video formats, Surface Pro 2, again, is going to win on that. But if it's stuff that is supported, again, like Netflix, YouTube, um, websites, who network channels that you, who you know work because you're already using it on Android, then obviously you're going to get a really nice big screen, higher resolution, sharper, colorful experience on the Galaxy. Both of these have stereo speakers, and they're both pretty darn good. The Samsung's Fire off the side here, that's a speaker grill right there, and they're both pretty loud and actually pretty full too, and the surfaces fire out from around the edge here in this clever little design wedge that they have going on here. It's pretty hard to see, but both of these are pretty good when it comes to the built-in speakers. And of course, you can always use headphones, Bluetooth speakers, wired speakers with either of these, whatever suits you. So not really a big difference there. Now for art stuff, uh, you folks might not know this, but tablet PCs with pens have been around for about a decade now. So guess what? There's more applications and they're more mature. Let's put it that way. And it depends on what you want to do. So this is Alias Sketchbook Pro. It's called Sketchbook for Galaxy in this bundle. And it's, it's a great sketching tool. Natural media tools, not so much. You can see what we have here. We have pencil, we have airbrush, we have a basic brush for oil, kind of watercolor stuff. We have an eraser. It's not bad. It's not natural media heaven. If you're a manga kind of person, I know a lot of you folks are these days, for pen and ink tools, there's a lot of programs that are good. There's manga programs for Android now. There's Infinite Painter, which is great. There's Layer Painter that's also good. There's, of course, this is quite adequate as well. This even supports layers, which is kind of handy too. Blending and smudging tools, not so great yet on Android. Again, but if you want something really natural media-like, 
Windows is going to be, a, I have Corel Painter 13 up here, and oh my god, the wealth of different pastels, different kinds of oil brushes, watercolor brushes, you name it, things that really mimic natural media, it's far superior. But if you're not into natural media style painting, then you could go either way. Pressure sensitivity on both of these, very good. Pen tracking on both of these, very good. So, a wash there. Now when it comes to note taking, again, you people know who you are. If you live and breathe one note, then the Surface Pro 2 is going to be it for you. And it is a very powerful tool. You can hand write right here and have it turn anything that you want into text. It's obviously, office integration, it's all good there. So if you're a OneNote person, OneNote for Android really doesn't compete with what you can get here on the Surface Pro 2. But if you're not particularly married to OneNote, say you're maybe you're more like an Evernote kind of person, there are a lot of good note-taking apps. We have Quill up right now. Of course, this comes with S-Note as well, which is a built-in note-taking application. There's lecture notes. There's plenty of good ones. So you can handwrite stuff to your heart's content as if it was a digital notebook. Only some applications can turn this into text for you. For example, Evernote can actually do that now. There's a nice integration going on, so you can do that inside of Evernote. And S-Note can do that as well. It can also do formulas, but a lot of these third-party ones just leave it as text, as bitmap, rather, visual text. So it depends on what you're looking for. Just, just want to write down your notes and have a digital version of them. You want that OneNote integration and that really good handwriting to text feature. Surface Pro 2 is going to win on the, definitely on the, the text conversion. Another big point is multitasking. Obviously with Windows you've got multitasking. With the live tiles you can split those up, but we have full Windows desktop here. And aha, uh -huh. see how teeny everything is? Windows, even Windows 8.1, uh, particularly the applications that you install, say Adobe products, they don't scale really well on, sm on smaller screens. So the UI can be very teeny. With Android, just like iOS, the scaling is always handled nicely so everything's big and easy to see. Okay, now that we've got that done, obviously it's Windows. You got you got yourself a web browser here. You can resize this. You can put as many windows as you want. You know how Windows works by now. With Android, Samsung has customized it to do multitasking. You can sw swipe in from the side and bring in multitasking. So say I want Hancom Word there. There's my Hancom Word. I'll open a document. And then I want to look up something on the web. So then I bring up the web browser. So there you go. I've got the web browser there. So, well, what if I need to look at something else? Maybe a file manager. I want to look for a file. There, I can do that again. Up to four applications. And you can have some applications as little floating windows, too. So that's how multitasking is handled here, which is very different from stock Android. That's Samsung's version of multitasking. It's very nice. It's very capable. And the Note 12.2, the Pro version, add, brings you this four-way doing it before it used to only be split screen between two applications. And you can resize these windows as well. But with Windows, obviously, you have the ultimate flexibility there. Any size, any number of windows until you finally run out of memory, as many applications as you want in whatever arrangement you want. You're not stuck into the, the grid of four over here, resizable though this is. It, it's still not as customizable a view as that. So really, in the end, I heard these four. Obviously, the Surface Pro 2 is for the business user or for anybody. It doesn't mean that you work for a huge corporation or something and they buy it for you. If, you have, if you're self-employed, if you're an independent contractor, anybody who needs the power of Windows on the go and all the Windows programs that you use, the Surface Pro 2 is going to be it. For those of you who are just like, I need to update WordPress, I need to use Hancom Office, which is incredibly capable on this, by the way, it comes with Hancom Office, most full-featured mobile office system I have ever seen. You've got that on board as well. So basic productivity, but you're not really tied to Windows programs, then this certainly can work for you quite well. So that's our comparison between the Microsoft Surface Pro 2 and the Samsung Galaxy Note Pro 12.2, both available now. Both will set you back a big chunk of change, but as you can see, it really depends on what you want to do with your tablet and what kind of experience you want. To some people, this is insane here for $750. To other people, this is insanely too small to get work done. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full review of both of these products, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.